topic of my message today is how to fix bad mood. Uh, I hope you are in a good mood today, but I'm sure uh, sometime in the past you dealt with this uh, mood, uh, bad mood, mood swings. I believe that uh, the state of our spirit, the state of our mood affects affects not only you, but it affects everything and it affects everybody. Often when you think that I am uh, in a bad mood, so it's my problem, I'm the only one who is dealing with the problem, it's actually, it's actually not true. If you are in a bad mood, this bad mood, it's also your spouse's problem, your co-worker's problem, it affects everybody more than you think and it's actually toxic and destructive. So in order to avoid or fix that bad mood, we will talk and we will see from the Bible perspective how you can fix that bad mood or that negative spirit. I know that uh, when we are in a bad mood, often when, we're, when we don't have joy inside of our heart, often it's so connected with the lack or absence of peace in your heart. And often when we uh, react, when we um, get emotional, often we think it's because of him, because of our circumstances, because it's logic, because whatever excuse we have. But often there's just two factors. It's in that particular moment, either you had peace, inner peace or you didn't have it and based on if you live dwell if you have that peace inside of you it affects your mood your reaction your decisions and all of the above so let's go together and read this i believe it's a very deep passage colossians chapter 3 verse 15 through 17 colossians 3 verse 15 through 17 let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed do in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God I think every sentence in this passage has a lesson for us we will try to see how to have peace in practical way how to have this good mood lack of peace or absence of peace equals bad mood so we'll try to see how to, according to the Bible, how we can practically have it in our hearts. So first of all, here, the call, it's not only about our emotions. First of all, this Bible passage says that every believer, if you're born again, if you are filled with the Spirit of God, you have the potential to have God's peace inside of you. If you're not a believer, if you don't believe in God, if you don't follow Jesus Christ, you, you basically don't have a chance to have God's peace. One more detail. Here we, we clearly see that it talks about God's peace, which means that there is also another option. There is a different type of peace. There is God's peace and there is probably your own peace, economical peace, uh, global peace often earthly peace depends on absence of war absence of famine if you have enough money if you are healthy that means you have peace as and as soon as all these earthly factors are affected you lose peace right away god's peace the one that we that we're talking about here that's why it's called not only peace it's called god's peace the main difference is this God's peace does not depend on circumstances. It doesn't matter what you are going through, even though you might go through storms and troubles and problems, but because of this potential that you have in you as a believer, you can have God's peace that, that is not affected by outside 
is not affected by earthly reasons. And it doesn't mean that we never get scared. It does not mean that we never get emotional. It doesn't mean that we never worry. It does not mean that we are always in good mood. But what it means is that we as believers, we know the way. We have this potential to come out of this bad mood and to be or dwell in God's peace. Why do we need God's peace? First, we see that the Bible says that it's our calling. It's our calling. It's the first reason why we need God's peace. You know, when you're called to the army, the soldiers, those who are called into Navy, for example, they are very different. They live on a different level. They have different sets of rules. They, they have different schedule. And whatever you can do, they cannot. And it's true for the other way around. Because they're called, sometimes they, I'm a soldier. I must do this. We as believers, we're also called to be part of God's army. And as believers, it says that we are called to be, to live in God's peace. That's what makes us different. If you go through whatever trial you are going right now or, or went in the past, if your reaction is the same as normal people in this world, you know, you're down, you're depressed, you're uh, sad, you're complaining, there's... It doesn't make any difference you know the only difference is like maybe you go to church on Sunday but because we're called we're supposed to be different that's first reason why we talk about God's peace but the biggest reason why God's peace is given to us why we're called to live in God's peace is this if you pay attention it says let the peace of God rule in your life very 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 important detail you need peace not only to feel better it's not only about your emotions it's not only because well you know i feel down now i want to feel better so okay here we go god's peace no god's peace has a purpose god's peace is supposed to rule your heart your emotions your decisions, your reactions, your life. God's peace. So now every time, remember, every time you make a decision, you react. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. It doesn't matter who provoked you. It doesn't matter what we are going through as believers. We're called to always dwell in the state of God's peace. And if you are if you have God's peace inside of you, all your decisions, your mood, everything will be affected based on two factors. Either you have God's peace or you don't. If you have, you, I'm sure you, you, you can already see how your reaction will be if you have God's peace. Okay, now I'm sure that we often can, we, we can confess that often we are ruled by our emotions, by the way people treat us, by whatever challenges we face, but we're supposed to be ruled by God's peace. Okay, I'm sure you understand that, uh, okay, um, not to have God's peace is bad, uh, to, have, to be in bad mood is also bad. Okay, so what do I do? How do I have, how do I get it? And here in that same passage, we can see four very practical steps how to have God's peace. If we read it together one more time, it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And then practical steps. Step number one, be thankful. Step number two, let the word of God dwell or abide in you. Step number three, sing him praise and worship and spiritual songs and step number four whatever you do in words or deeds do it in the name of jesus christ or for jesus christ now let's go step by step so step number one how to practically fix your mood or to how to have that 
peace inside of you, it's be grateful. I'm not sure if you have ever made that connection that if you want to have God's, if you want to be in peace, you must be grateful. Peace and being grateful, it's connected. We will see other passages from the Bible where it clearly says that peace and being grateful, it's connected. It's not just psychological trick, but it's biblical method. How to fix your mood or how to be in peace. When we're grateful, it affects our spirit. And the Bible says that we must be grateful for all things, but often we don't see the reason why should we be grateful, because we see everything through the lens from the, through the lens of earthly things. But if we would look at that same circumstances through the from the perspective of eternity everything changes but i know me and you we are often we get you know uh often we uh get shifted to this position where we are because we live in flesh we're affected but that's why the word of god is reminding all of us today that we are called to live in peace we're called so peace of God would rule us so whatever you're saying whatever you're commenting whatever your re uh, your reaction your action your decision make sure that you're in the state of I am in peace I have God's peace and that's why I am making this decision that's why I am making this comment because I am in peace and that peace is supposed to rule me then it says we see in this um, in practical in our practical life that often when we lose peace when we're hurt by some people or we go through some problems challenges often we uh, start this monologue with ourselves where we explain ourselves how horrible he or she is how uh, miserable I am we dwell in self-pity we uh, complain we are talking to ourselves in our minds but what if at that particular moment you step on your foot you stop yourself and you say no 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 no, no. I'm not gonna go this route I am gonna be grateful for what I'm going to be grateful. I choose to be grateful because the word of God calls me. If I want the peace of God to rule me and my emotions, I choose to be grateful. To who? First of all, to God. Why? Because you're still breathing, still alive. First of all, saved, forgiven. You have hope, eternal life. And even after death, you're only in the beginning. Eternity is still ahead of you. And when you proclaim and confess and when your mind, your thinking is going that way, this is your expression of your faith. Often we express our faith only, to give an example, I had a need, I prayed, my need was, my prayer was answered and then I say to everybody, praise God, I have a testimony, you know, my problem got fixed, glory be to God. That's a good way, that's, that's okay, that's good to do so. But what if you pray and your prayer was not answered yet or it was not the way you have requested, but you still choose to be grateful and you still choose to say thank you and I worship you, Lord. It's also an expression of faith. But on a, on a different level. Imagine when your kid, if you have a, you know, three, five-year-old kid and he or she is like screaming, complaining, you're not letting her go, or you're not letting her do what she wants. Imagine after this, uh, he or she got, your kid got so pissed, uh, crying, whining for, I don't know, hours, and then suddenly, a surprise. Here, your child, she comes to you, and she says, hey daddy, you know what? I'm so grateful. I'm still trusting you 
you would be like shocked. You think it's impossible. At the maturity level of that child, it's impossible to think that way or to say such things. That's often how we react towards God. That's why the Bible tells us, if you want to have peace, be grateful for everything and for anything. Romans, often when we go in this, when, when our mind is negative, in, when we get into this complaining mode, when we are talking to ourselves because we are in bad mood, Romans, Romans 8, 6, it says, the mind governed by flesh is death. You're thinking. But your thoughts or your mind governed by spirit is life and peace. So you, you, can, you, you have the option. You have the potential. You have the choice where if you are thinking, if you stop your thinking, and if you change your thinking in a different direction, then as a result of this thinking, it leads either to death, not physical death, spiritually you are degradating spiritually and it also leads to peace you see the end of this bible verse it says it lead, leads you to peace or the opposite of peace you know when you look at the story of job job you know he buried his close people he went through bankruptcy and he got sick himself But when he starts speaking, he, is, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord, my God, whom I serve, he is the one who gave all of, all of this and he's the one who took it away from me. What is he trying to express through his reaction? I am still grateful to God. I'm still worshiping him and trusting him. In a spiritual round, this is a big victory, big victory. This is a very not logical reaction, but he's still choosing, this is practical application, to be in peace. First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. Be grateful and thankful for all circumstances, for everything things you understand and things you don't understand but if you are grateful if you still trust your God that he can't get too sleepy God cannot get too busy everything is still under control then you come into the state where you are in his will if you're grateful for everything this is God's will your mind your spirit you are in a state of, you are in this zone of God's will. Often we don't mind to be in this zone of God's will for a couple hours. Most of the time, most of the day, we are in our own zone, in our own will. But when we step into God's will, you live in a, in a different dimension. Even though it's raining, but you have a roof over your head. Rain did not stop, but you are covered because you're in God's will. So first step, how to have God's peace in your heart is be grateful. Second step, if we go back to our passage, Colossians 3.15, it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and then let the word of God dwell in you richly. Not just a little bit, not just a verse of the day on your screen, on your phone, but richly, a lot, with abundance. Let the word of God be part of your life. I often think that we know a lot of things, but we don't practice them, we don't do them. I'm sure that everyone wants peace. You love peace, and often we lack peace. But if today you came to church and you heard this huge revelation, just read the Bible, you're like, oh really? That's the revelation you got for me. That's why I came here. That's all you have to say. I'm dealing with huge problems and all you have for me is like, read the Bible. Really? Yes, really. I already, I know you knew about it. Uh, yeah, but you don't practice it. Yeah, 
yeah that that's that's why you see it says richly dwell in the word of god may this be part of you your devotions morning devo devotions evening devotions your solitude with god your private time with god where you are with him one-on-one -on -one alone it's it it must be like your breakfast or lunch every day trust me these very basic well-known steps will affect your mood will affect your peace the bible says second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture scripture is inspired by god and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives and the word of god is able to correct us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right i'm sure we were we are trying to fix many things in our lives sometimes we fix cars we fix trucks we fix computers we fix houses but one thing you have hard time to fix is to fix yourself i'm sure you tried many times to fix yourself and often some people told me i hate myself and i hate it with passion because they're sick and tired of action wrong reaction etc but this is the good news that you you the word of god if you abide if you dwell if you if you if you eat if you feed from the word of god the bible says it's able to correct you correct me and it will teach us what is right and what is wrong often when we are dealing with um, bad mood when we are uh, scared when we're worried about some things we often try to find a solution in google who have used google when you have problems don't raise your hand i'm not saying it's a sin but i will sh i want to show you something that it's very practical we all deal with that including me you know we are all tempted to do that but listen when it's not a sin you right to read information but one thing you must know this information for sure will not bring you peace only the word of god only biblical method might bring you peace when you read about your uh sickness about your problems about okay five steps to happiness i don't know five steps to fix my body whatever steps you are looking for whatever goal you're trying to re reach remember that most likely it will not bring you peace and often we dwell in google instead of dwelling in the word of god We might at the same time complain that we are in stress, distress, we're worried and people don't understand us and they don't try to comfort us or they don't notice us. But actually it's not always true. They do have an advice for you. They do have a solution for you. But you don't like that method. If you're worried and someone will show up and will tell you, so what's wrong with you? Well, I'm so stressed out. I'm so worried. Why don't you just read the Bible? Really? I'm sorry. And you run away. I'm sorry for such advice. I'm sorry. Actually, yeah. Just check Google. Now I feel better. Don't we see or do that sometimes we know but we don't practice it we know the truth but we don't obey it we try to find some some psychological methods clinics i'm not saying that it's wrong but often we neglect biblical methods very well known godly methods how to deal with your mood and with your lack of peace often people just they just uh, are looking for fi quick fix they're looking for this button they can press but often it's just stop browsing your instagram stop spending hours and hours 
watching movies, playing games, uh, being on social media. I'm not saying that it's a sin, but if you are, if that's the majority of your time, it takes majority of your time, if that's the priority, if that's the first thing you do, if you're saying you don't have time for devotions and the Word of God because you're not interested in that enough, then it creates a problem. Step number two, dwell in the Word of God. Step number three, how to practically have God's peace is sing, worship your Lord God. Colossians 3.15, we read, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and then psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, sing them with grace in your hearts. You might say, well, what if I don't have uh, music, musical talent? What if I'm not good enough? What if my singing is not good enough? I'm not a professional. I have a good news for you. <laughs> it says, sing in your heart. So it doesn't matter if you're talented or not. Sing in your heart. It's all about your spirit. It's not about physical voice or your musical abilities. It's your heart, your spirit. Obviously, of course, you can sing out loud. But it's, first of all, in your heart. I'm sure you agree that often when people are in good mood, you can hear them walking somewhere. <laughs> they're like washing dishes, fixing cars, and they're like singing to themselves. Don't you agree that it's a big, big, big sign they're in good mood? If they're in bad mood, they will never sing. Let me fix myself. They will sing inside of them like, oh, what is this? What is that? I cannot believe this. Like, I cannot believe that. They're singing, they're rapping. Yeah. Yeah. Talking to themselves. <laughs> That's what they do. But they can, they can do and they can sing in a different song <laughs> on a different level. Praise and worship to our Lord and God. It's, I remember when I was driving in my car. I was so, I felt so down. I remembered, I felt so heavy inside of, inside of me. But praise God, we have God's spirit inside of us, which gives us this, we have sensors, spiritual sensors inside of us, where the spirit is telling you, trust me, still worship me, praise me. And the other spirit tells you like no way no way like how come like and you are talking to yourself again repeating you know playing this this story again you're like you're mad angry and i remember i turned on a worship song in my car trust me the last thing i wanted to do at that moment is to sing something and barely, barely, I was moving my lips. I started quietly singing this song of praise and worship. Song after song. And then I didn't even, I wasn't ready. Tears were, were going down my cheeks. And after some time passed by, something something i cannot explain it i uh, i'm not a psychologist i think it's above psychology it's god's principle biblical method how to have god's peace when you are obeying the truth the truth has power it has power i don't know why the problems did not go away but peace came Instead, peace, God's peace, God's peace. I remember when my father, when he was sick, he was fighting leukemia, when he went to the doctor and the doctor told him, sir, you have about half, about six months to live. What will you do? My wife, she was translating for him and she had a hard time to translate such bad news. So after some time she said, 
that you know the doctor is saying that you have about six months to live and he's asking what will you do he paused and then he said tell him that i will sing very strange reaction very not logical the doctor said maybe you need to see a psychologist he said no 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 i'm good tell him i will sing i remember one young couple from our church they shared this story with me uh, she was delivering delivering her first baby and she was in the hospital and she had many complications she was uh on this in the surgery room for about 24 hours and she was in so much pain lost her physical strength can you only imagine you know ladies especially when you are going through um, when you're delivering a baby and then after she was so so beyond the point weak she started singing she started singing doctors were like you know they start checking her temperature her blood pressure right away you know it's like it's it's not a common reaction you know like why would you sing worship and when you are delivering a baby you know or why would you sing worship when you are like uh in pain bleeding like why you know why because we are called to have god's peace we are different we have a different different DNA. We're called to abide in God's peace so God's peace would rule in our life in the hardest moments of your life when you're battling life and death. A little bit later, her husband started joining her and singing along with her. Can you guys imagine that was such a powerful crusade right there in the hospital? I don't think doctors have ever dealt with anything like that in the past. Guys, do you, Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2, it says, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For yes, the Lord is my strength and my song. Stop. Why do we talk about music and songs here? What songs and music has to do with my problems? Read it again. God is my salvation. I will trust. I will not be afraid. God is, the Lord is my strength and my song. Yes. Here we go again. We're dealing with singing, worshiping. Even though I'm afraid and that's why I trust. I trust because I'm afraid and I choose him to be the source of my strength and salvation and that's why i sing even though it's not logical but i choose to be grateful and i choose to sing such a weird method to deal with problems another example is acts chapter 16 verse 12 around midnight paul and silas they were praying and singing hymns other translation says praise and worship to God and the prisoners were listening to them around midnight that's when usually people don't sing in prison usually people don't sing they didn't just pray Lord God please have mercy and rescue me from this horrible place yes they prayed and they also worshiped they sang where in prison right in the midst of your problems do you feel their mood do you feel what was the state of their spirit at that moment? You remember first Christians when they were persecuted, when they were burned, what did they do? From church history we know they were singing. Why? Because we're cold. To have God's peace and practical biblical method how you can have God's peace worship praise can you imagine you're like in a bad mood 
you're like angry and someone comes to you and, hey, and says, hey, what's up? Don't talk to me. I'm in bad mood. And then you realize, oh, I'm angry. I'm in bad mood. Oh, okay. Why don't I go and sing? You go into your room, you close your door, and you're thinking to, to yourself, well, I'm crazy. What am I doing? And then you think, yeah, it's against logic. Usually no, people don't do that. But because I choose to use biblical method. I knew about it, I heard about it, but never practiced it. And now you open the Word of God and you start reading. Chapter after chapter. And then you start singing song after song. And you are barely speaking out loud and you're saying, Lord God, I need peace right now. I need it so bad. Please, Lord God, I trust you. I am going after your method. Please restore my peace inside of me. Often, you know, when we are distressed, when we are worried, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And often we say to ourselves or we say it out loud, I'm so worried, I'm so worried. My question is, do you like this state? Are you happy that you're worried? No, of course. So stop worrying. Well, I'm so worried that I cannot stop worrying. Okay, you know it's destructive. It's not helping. So don't worry. You know, it's easy to say, you know, I'm worried. I'm so worried and I can't help myself. I can't stop worrying. Well, have you, what did you do what have you done to stop worrying? Well, no, 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 hold on, hold on. What have you done from the biblical perspective in order to stop your worry and to abide in peace? What do you mean from biblical perspective? Well, I called my guy, I called my friend, I told him this, I told that. Well, I tried this, I, was, I looked uh, on Google, I tried everything. Yes, I know, you tried everything and nothing worked. Why don't you try biblical method? I know you have tried already many other methods. Try biblical steps. And remember that worship replaces your worry. Praise replace, will replace your worry. Step number four, what you can practically do to uh, have God's peace. Do everything for him and in his name. Colossians 3.17, we're going back to our core Bible ver verse. It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and whatever you do, whatever means everything, whatever you do in the word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God. In the name of him, that means you do this because not of you, not because of other people, because of him and for him. Whatever you do, whatever you say, do it for him, because of him. He's the reason behind why am I doing this. You remember last week we, talk about, we talked about MMM. Motive, motives moves mountains. Colossians 3.23, it says, and whatever you do, do it from the bottom of your heart as to the Lord not to men as to the Lord not to men because every time you do anything for men you might be discouraged you must be disappointed you will feel unappreciated you might be hurt because you did it for people even though you claim you said well I'm doing it for the Lord I'm everything I do I do it for the Lord no 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 hold on my friend Wait until these people hurt you and then you will sing a different song. Then you will say how you do it for the Lord. No, no, no. Your, your, your mood will change fast because in reality you did it for people. But when you understand that deep biblical principle, whatever you do, I do it as for the Lord. When you have that switch in your mind, your motive, why you are doing this, then this mountain can be moved mountain of bitterness or offense or or bad mood negative spirit that's why one of the reasons one of the methods how you can have God's peace or deal with this bad mood is 
remember about your motive. Whatever you say, whatever you do, all your plans, future plans, make sure you look at this, who am I doing this for? Who, who am, why am I doing this? And then if you practice all these four steps, then Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, it says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds. So God's peace is supposed to rule you. And it has also another purpose. God's peace is supposed to guard your thoughts from negative thoughts, evil thoughts, angry thoughts. If you have God's peace, it's like a filter in your mind. It prevents negative thoughts to go into your heart. So first, God's, God's peace will filter or will, go, will, will guard your thoughts and it will also guard your heart. And, but only if you have God's peace. How do, you, how, do I, how do you get God's peace? Four steps. We just talked about it. And if you have that peace in your heart, then your mind and your heart will be protected. And it says also that it's a kind of peace that is above your logic. You cannot understand it. You cannot draw a picture how it works. You will not have enough fingers or words to explain this. It says it exceeds understanding. Anything we can understand. It's not logical. It's not human. It's God's peace. That's the potential we all have as believers in God. To have that kind of, that type of peace. Today, before we pray, I would like to encourage you guys to, if we can have these four points on the screen, take a picture, write it down, use it, try it. If you are dealing sometimes with bad mood or if you are in need of peace, this is, these are practical steps. This is biblical method, how to have God's peace. You know, as believers, we're called to be ruled by God's peace and we're also called to be, to live and to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Act according to the Spirit, not according to your flesh. What it means, let me present you this Bible verse, very interesting uh, last thought. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. Do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving, always, giving thanks always for all things to God. Is there is anything you see in this passage that we just talked about? It's a different passage. The context of this Bible verse is we are to walk in spirit. We are, I'm sorry, we are to be filled with spirit. But very, very, very interesting fact. The principles and the methods are the same. It also has to do with be grateful. It also has to do with your worship and singing. Here we go again. Same principle. Same principle. It's just copied and paste. We often want to be filled with the Spirit. You know, to be filled with the Spirit, it's an ongoing process that we as believers are challenged we are to seek that and to be filled with the spirit on a regular basis and the practical method is on your screen once again be grateful worship praise him and then something will start happening in your spirit let's stand church